Roberto, and today I'm here with my friend and colleague Jason DePetropalo. And uh, today's question is, is what are some of the most popular shopping cart platforms for new direct-to-consumer brands? Um, so I, I think I'm going to kick it right over to Jason with his number one. I'm pretty sure I know what it's going to be. but Yeah, it's a question we hear all the time. Uh, and uh, I, I always, my number one go-to is Shopify. Um, it's probably the most popular shopping cart platform right now by far. Um, and it's just easy to use as somebody starting out. And, and even in scalability, uh, we see brands that are just starting out. Uh, to big brands uh, like Steve Madden uh, that just recently launched on Shopify. So uh, it's really built to scale. It's easy to use uh, from a, a startup standpoint. Um, probably by far, like I said, uh, the number one shopping cart platform out there. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, they've uh, they've come a long way since launching in 2004. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a hosted platform. So for my end, you know, running an agency, being a developer, you know, there's some things that I've always wanted with Shopify that I couldn't do that were limiting. I think a lot of that has changed in the past two to three years, um, especially once they launched the Plus platform, which is kind of their enterprise solution for large brands, like you like you say. Yeah, um, plus uh, their documentation is so robust, and there's so many partners there. So even if you don't understand something, uh, they have lots of documentation, and, and they have a huge partner network. So you can really uh, find that right partner that fits that's really well-versed in Shopify. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, there's a lot that you can do, and anybody that knows how to use uh, APIs or application programming interfaces can really almost do anything with Shopify. Maybe they have to write a, a small application that lives outside of it, but you can still almost do anything. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll take the, the second one here, and I think Magento is probably one that people have heard. It's been around for more than 20 years, um, was owned by eBay at one point, and uh, I think you actually had an experience with Magento, right? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's not really uh, user friendly f uh, from the beginning for for a small startup. Uh, you would need a developer to to kind of walk you through the basics and get you started on it. It's not something uh, that I'd be able to to launch on my own. Yeah, and I think that's that's exactly right. So me as a developer, um, understanding it runs on PHP and MySQL underneath, um, I could do anything with it, and it's open source, so I can change anything I want, do anything I want, and like the the possibilities are endless. So. I think depending on what you're doing, if you're just trying to sell apparel and you just want to put a picture online, maybe a short description, and just have people add to cart and check out without thinking about anything, then that's probably your, your choice would be Shopify. But, um, you know, if you're going to do something completely out of the box, that's a new experience in e-commerce, I think Magento is probably a, a good um, option for you to still look at. But just understanding that it's not going to be simple to get up and, and running uh, immediately, but does have a lot of flexibility. Yeah, I think we've, uh, I don't know why, but I think we've seen some customers recently migrating from Magento to Shopify. Is that, is that becoming popular? Yeah, and I think it's most of those customers that have the simple setup that just want to buy and sell online. Mm -hmm. I still think there's people that are using Magento that have custom experiences. Um, you know, like a subscription service like Harry's, I'm not saying that they're using Magento, but they're not necessarily doing something where it's, you know, one, one, two, three. They're doing a lot of customization around that subscription. Um, so I think that's that's kind of like the differentiation, whereas if, you know, I just have a widget that I want to sell and I just want to have a cart page, somebody adds the cart and checks out, then Shopify is much, much easier to get running. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so the third uh, the third uh, shopping cart platform, I, I would say, is probably uh, Big Commerce, uh, which I think is probably the, the closest direct competitor to Shopify right now. Um, I, I think it's probably, from a developer standpoint, a little bit more robust than Shopify. Uh, but the limitation is, is I, I don't think their partner network is as big. Um, and I think that it's a little bit harder to get started for somebody, uh, for the for the novice person out there trying to get started. Um, but it's more robust for that developer that's looking to, you know, to get something in between uh, the flexibility of Shopify and Magento. Yeah, I was just gonna, that was exactly what I was going to say if you didn't say it. I think it's somewhere in between Shopify and Magento. I mean, it is hosted. Um, and there's a lot of tools for retail retailers or resellers, um, where Shopify is really just focused on the brand. So, um, you know, as it relates to this podcast, I, that's why I would put Shopify number one is because, um, you know, if you're, if you're actually going to be a direct to consumer brand, it probably has everything you need. Whereas if you're a reseller and you want to sell on eBay and Walmart on Amazon on all of these different places, um, then maybe big commerce is something for you to check out. So, so when you say hosted, do you mean, uh, something like Magento you'd have to have on your own server or? Um, and, and as opposed to Shopify and big commerce where they're really cloud-based. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, and I think Magento had a cloud product at one time and I'm, I'm sure on the enterprise side, they still do some hosting, but you know, for the, for the purpose of this podcast for a new upstart, yeah, you're going to have to figure that out yourself for the open source version, unless you have a budget to, to really yeah. pay somebody to deal with that for you. Yeah. Yeah, and then the last one, um, so today we only have four, and these are really for new upstart brands. I mean, I think we can have another 
full episode on, on enterprise um, solutions. But the last one that we hear about a lot is WooCommerce, which um, was purchased by Automatic, who is the parent company that creates um, WordPress. Um, it's kind of like Magento, the same thing based on PHP and MySQL. Um, you can kind of do a lot of what you want. I think it's probably a good platform to get started if you're going to just start selling, but you're not worried about large volume, maybe less than 50 hundred orders a month. And I don't want to say it's not the scalability of WooCommerce, but it has the same problems with Magento where there's infinite customizations. You install a plugin and all of a sudden you can't take, take uh, orders anymore. Like that's just not acceptable for um, a, a scaling direct to consumer brand. Um, so again, I, I would really recommend that uh, only for people that are just trying to get started and want to pay $5 a month and, and Shopify is not even that much more expensive. So yeah, I was going to say, I think there's more e-commerce stores running WooCommerce than all the others. I'm sure. Uh, but I think it comes back to the, the cost of WooCommerce as, as the reason. Uh, you know, and, and from our customers, what we see, um, you know, the clients that I've worked with on, on my business is uh, that usually they start off in WooCommerce um, and then run into a bunch of limitations and then usually, you know, migrate to Shopify or BigCommerce. Well, and to your point about the statistic, I don't know the answer, um, but I would assume that the number of orders produced from all those WooCommerce stores is still significantly Correct. less than any of you're, those hosted platforms. And, and I think it's really easy to get up and running if you have a WordPress yeah. site. You can easily yep. uh, you know, get up and running with WooCommerce. So. Exactly. Um, and I think even at this point, Shopify even has, and I think even BigCommerce just launched a, Woo, uh, a WordPress integration. So if you're using WordPress for marketing, but then you need a shopping cart, you can easily just install one of those. So. Um, you know, not to uh, go down too far on WooCommerce, it's just we've always seen uh, more problems than it's worth for um, the cost for all the customers that we've worked with. Correct. Well, great. Um, yeah, I think that that really gives a, a good um, top down view. Um, you know, from our from our standpoint, I, I kind of agree with Jason. It would start with Shopify, Magento, if you want to do something a little bit more custom. I think BigCommerce is right behind Shopify. You know, if I was to personally start one. Um, Depending on the, the use case, I think they're they're pretty much neck and neck. Um, but yeah, I would probably not use WooCommerce once I actually want to take orders. I agree. I agree totally. Well, great. Um, this has been another episode of Direct Consumer Academy. Thank you, Jason, for coming out today. And Thanks for having me. Look forward to seeing uh, uh, you all again soon.